Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we continue our work on the Canva TS450S. We have some problems to solve. The main problem is the delayed switching between RX and TX, especially from TX back to RX. And there is an idea how to solve this problem. In the last video we have seen that we have a problem, an isolation problem between some pins. There are some mag ohm between pins where the resistance should be infinite. My assumption is that it is humidity. I don't see any other dirt or so. I cleaned it. So I think it's worth a try to dry it out. And I have an idea how to do this. I put the both modules, the TRX module and the break-in unit on a small piece of brass and placed it on my oven in my kitchen on the lowest uh, setting of the, of the oven and then I will let it dry out for several hours and then I measure again the ohmic resistances to see whether we have a problem with humidity or whether the problem is anywhere else, ah, now the oven is active. We will see what the result is, whether it's a humidity problem or a different problem. Now I will do the same measurement as before between the pins. I start with pin 5 to 4. There's nothing. Oh, sorry, this set the voltage. Wrong measurement. One hundred megohm. We had ten megohm before the treatment with heat. Four to three. In the range of hundred megohm, ninety megohm. We had seven megohm. And from 3 to 2, 18, 19, we had 4 megohms. We still have some isolation problem. Another reference measurement 10, 9, 8 to 7, there should be nothing. 8 to 9, Nothing also, it means infinite, that's okay. And the other pins, we still have some isolation problems. So I will do a another measure. I take out these two pins, which are not needed. Pin 3 and pin 4 to increase the distance between pin 2 and pin 5. So the, the creepage distance is longer when I take out these two pins. And that's what I will do now. The two pins are unsoldered. I removed also, of course, uh, the pads, cleaned it very thoroughly with a, with a cutter on both sides, here and here, so no, no more residues from anything are present. Now the isolation is optimized, I can't do more. And then it's time to bring it back into the transceiver. The two, two modules are in place now. Soldered, I cleaned everything, the board also, and they're in place. And now let's check the behavior of the uh, RXTX switching. Watch this lamp. Transmit. And now receive. Transmit. Receive, transmit, receive, no delay, it works. And now we will have a look at the scope. Now we have the same setting as for the measurement before. When I switch on, it's a pin 2, the input. And now off. That's how should it be. One second per time, you remember we had here a long time constant. 
and then a residual voltage until it dropped down. Now it is operating perfect. So we can say indeed it was a problem of humidity. I didn't again I didn't see any acid or so from an electrolytic. I think it was really a humidity. So the cleaning and the uh, the roasting it, it was well done was helpful now this problem is solved as an additional uh, safety measure or safety belt i decided to install a parallel resistor parallel to the 100k my first experiments i had 15k i've chosen 22k a little bit higher but this is always much 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 lower than these coupling resistors in the moment they are not present but I don't know what will happen in the future when this transceiver gets older so I want to have a, an additional safety measure which prevents this problem again uh, coming back so it is located this additional resistor exactly here between pin 1 and 2 oh, let's take the tweezer between pin 1 and 2 pin 3 and 4 are removed as we have seen so now this uh, area here should be within the safe region region safe region for the next uh, decades as long as this transceiver will be used just a short discussion regarding uh, possible problems uh, first of all some uh, users visitors on my uh, channel mentioned that the c105 should be swapped it is swapped already this one here and i see i think i talked about it see a signs of leakage so it has been repaired and uh, another guy uh, shifted this capacitor c101 101 away from the ic from the af amplifier which gets obviously rather hot to have a little bit more more space more distance that's the reason why this capacitor is a little bit shifted also looks a little bit strange odd well now to the uh, problems we have seen that this uh, small resistor here on the board was oxid oxidized or so don't know exactly what happened but again this is the bottom side shifted and then everything what happens here would drop into this direction. When I have a look at the bottom cover, which is located this way, and when I have a look inside it, there's absolutely no damage. This here is only a personal note from the owner. I covered it. Not necessary to, to read it, but th there is also no no problem only one thing here in the corner there are signs of, of, of rust which corresponds corresponds to this uh, location here there's also some signs of rust if ever happened that a liquid came here onto this board it must have happened when the transceiver is in this position and it is open I don't see any other possibilities here nothing if it would have dropping in here would come to this region so I'm absolutely not sure what happened and it's also important to know that there is a, a sh in the chassis there is a, a metal sheet between top and bottom boards so if something uh, intruded on from the top side it cannot drop to the bottom side I'm a little bit uh, surprised. I don't think uh, more about it makes no sense. So we can focus now on the next topic. Well, my friends, in part two, we had a discussion whether it was a leaking cap or not. In my first assumption, I couldn't see any leaking cap, no signs. I tried out. Uh, on an oven this little board here you've seen i modified it removed some pins cleaned it now it works as a should but the assumption humidity hmm, i was not really convinced and uh, some 
YouTubers here on my channel uh, nearly insisted on the assumption that we have a leaking cap. When I thoroughly inspected with a lamp and reflections, not looking uh, straight on the board, but also from the side with some uh, reflections caused by a lamp, I saw a trace in this direction. I could wipe it away. And then I thought, okay, this is the trace of some acid. I will show you why there's a trace. I removed this cap. And now we can see, indeed, we have a leaking cap. And interesting, this is the cap C145, which supplies the voltage for the uh, microphone preamp or microphone amplifier, where we have a problem with the <coughs> modulation in SSB. I've checked if there is no modulation in SSB now output. And I think here is an interruption because this pin is nearly uh, deleted. And here we have a bridge on the lower side from this pin to this pin. And here we, we, here we have a resistor, a series resistor, capped to ground. This is plus, and this goes via a bridge on the bottom side. And here we have a problem. And why do we have here a trace from here to here? I have an assumption. When we have a look on the, on the whole transceiver, it's important to note that here on this side is the handle. And I talked to the owner, uh, he bought it used. He don't know uh, much about the history, but when we have here the handle and the transceiver stored with the handle uh, upside, as it is normal to carry it and to locate it anywhere, then this is top side here and this is the bottom side. So any leaking electrolytic can drop down here exactly to this unit where we had the problem. I think this is the cause. I will remove it and uh, rewire it, do some, uh, make some bridges, some thin wire. Of course, I clean it first and then uh, I will check the modulation bridge from here to here and from here to here to this pin from here to here. I will see what I, I can do and then um, I will check the modulation also. But thanks to some uh, YouTubers who insisted on, the, on it and they confirmed me in my doubts. I was not fully convinced by the assumption that it is humidity. So now I found the solution and as it is always in the life, don't make it too easy. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult than, uh, than we can assume, but then we find the solution. I replaced the electrolytic capacitor with an axial type because I have a problem with the feed through when it took out the old one. At least at this moment, the feed through here for the plus pole was deleted. So I had no good feed through the plus coming here on the top, top layer, top surface, top layer to this pin is not fed through the board or the bottom layer. So I use uh, this radial type. I can solder the plus pole to the bottom layer. And when it comes up here, I installed an additional, soldered an additional piece of wire, this one. And this is fed to the uh, 100 ohm resistor to the plus uh, supply, positive supply. Additionally, I installed here a bypass. I've seen that there's a very uh, thin wire, thin, thin trace fed uh, under this electrolytic and it was damaged a little bit. So I had fear that it is not good. There was still continuity. The target point is, is this one. So I made a parallel a jumper wire or bypass from this feed through to this feed through. So uh, when this uh, wire should be, should be dying in the future, we have a bypass. That's it. And uh, 
I think these caps here, I've checked it before I uh, soldered in these two uh, modules, these caps are okay. I used a small uh, blotting paper, uh, fed it under the caps and see whether it is wet or dry. It was dry, so I, I'm sure that these caps are good. And the only problem was caused by the, uh, this electrolytic cap and the electrolytic uh, drop down on the surface this way as we have discussed. Well, next step is to check the modulation amplifier. Obviously the SSB modulation now is also okay. It was caused by the uh, leaking electrolytic. I've here connected a, a signal, microphone signal, three millivolt, one kilohertz. And when I go to transmit, the output power is very low, but when I increase it with the power setting, 80 watts, the specified peak power up to 100 watts, I think this is reached, no problem. Also the box is operating with the signal we have at advanced at once full output power when I reduce the, the the audio frequency increase the amplitude not the frequency it's back again here we have a delay it's set to maximum delay is approximately uh, one or two seconds that's, that's okay for SSB can be reduced this delay sensitivity and anti-box can be set here on the side there are two trim pots which are accessible through holes. So I think it's okay. I will check uh, FM and, and, and CW, but in general, as I understand now, the problems the owner uh, wrote me, told me, all problems are solved now. And now we are at the end of the project with our Kenmo TS-450S. We had a problem with the totally misadjusted, misaligned bias setting for the driver and the final PA. The current was way too high. It was 10 amps. Bias setting required a 200, 300 milliamps. And the main problem, however, was the delayed RX-TX switching and the missing SSB modulation. This was caused by a leaking electrolytic who had influence on the TRX module and caused some delay due to a high ohmic bypass of the switching transistors. This could be cured by drying it uh, on, an oven, on an oven and uh, do some small modifications. I hope this is sufficient. Additionally, I added a small resistor in parallel to reduce the impedance, the input impedance. After this uh, repair, removing the old uh, electrolytic, cleaning the board, the transceiver works again as it should. I checked it. I will do some other checks with the owner, but I'm sure it's okay now. In general, we have a problem here with these old uh, transceivers. There are, uh, I've seen, I estimate approximately 50 electrolytics and tantalums in it. One bad electrolytic was swapped by a previous owner in the AF stage and I see a second one which I think was also removed due to leakage. My work was a third electrolytic capacitor. I'm not sure whether there are other problems. I made a thorough optical inspection but as I have seen with the electrolytic I found after some tries tries and errors, maybe there are other uh, problems involved which will occur in the future. I can't say this. On the other hand, a general swapping of all electrolytics is a big work and I think this is beyond the uh, capabilities of such a project of the owner and mine. I did it in the project before with the old Kenmo TS700S. I don't want to do it a second time, if not absolutely necessary, and I think it is not necessary. We will watch it, what's happening in the future. Stay tuned, stay healthy, and see you on this channel.